And Brad, it's all you. Thanks, Melinda. Thank you for that uh, awesome intro. It's always nice to have Shindig um, as part of your introduction. Um, hey, it's late. <laughs> it is. So um, today we're going to be uh, covering uh, a lot around the SharePoint performance tips and tricks. And over the years, um, we have figured out uh, a number of ways to improve SharePoint environments. It's, it's what we do for a living, and uh, we've even created a tool around it. So what we really think uh, makes SharePoint um, work and how we monitor it uh, all comes down to utilizing um, basic fundamentals um, as well as um, tools to assist you to do that. Um, so let me tell you a little bit more about GT so you get an understanding as well as what we're going to be chatting about today. Our agenda for the day is who is GT Consult, um, then the SharePoint fundamentals, uh, we'll jump into the fundamentals of infrastructure, operating system, SQL, SharePoint, and then we'll have a quick overview of Umlindi. At GT, our motto is enable productivity through outstanding delivery of solutions, services, and support. We are a Microsoft Gold partner. We are a Microsoft partner in Cloud Accelerate program. We're a business critical SharePoint partner. We're a SharePoint deployment planning services partner. We have branches in Cape Town, Durban, Johannesburg, and Seattle. Um, so we have a global presence. Um, and we've been in the game now for just over four years. We've got clients that range across the board um, from government to retail to mining to uh, fast moving consumer goods to financial. Um, so we don't just play in one vertical. We can assist customers in all different areas of the business. And this is because we focus on enabling um, IT solutions with the use of SharePoint. So we don't focus on one specific requirement. We focus on the business requirement and create a solution around that. At GT, uh, we've been covering pretty much every quadrant in the SharePoint sector, uh, which starts from support to productivity through creation and governance. And uh, in our years of experience, we figured out that um, it's a lot easier to use a best of breed product instead of reinventing the wheel. So we've created solutions where there has been a gap in the market and we utilize the best um, partners in the market when needed. So if we start all the way from our area in terms of support, Umlindi is by far the only product in its field that does what it does. Um, we go through our productivity stack with um, products such as Nintex Workflow and uh, DocuSign to help with um, online signatories. Uh, we've got uh, Avpoint for uh, document uh, governance and uh, migrations. We move all the way over to BR where we use Power BR. Uh, we're big into data zen at the moment. Um, we've also got a lot of solutions that we've created around managing and monitoring uh, usage in the SharePoint environment both on 2010, 2013, uh, 2016 and online in SharePoint Vitals. Um, we've created a lot of our own solutions like uh, Attend for event management and Agility for project management within SharePoint. Um, and of course we've got our Academy for training and uh, skilling up of uh, SharePoint end users. But uh, let's get into the fundamentals um, around SharePoint and understand a little bit more as to how to get the most performance out of your SharePoint environment. So a lot of the time, a SharePoint environment is deployed. It's um, done based on a next, next, next type of installation. We, uh, a lot of system engineers simply take the, the recommendations from TechNet, um, set up uh, the virtual environments and uh, run an installation. And 
sometimes that's good enough for a development environment. Uh, but any time you start going to a live environment with um, a lot of users, uh, those default generic settings uh, won't cut the mustard. And so the most important areas to watch out for uh, in infrastructure and uh, hardware are the four uh, main components of CPU, memory, storage and networking. So this is a good platform um, to pay close attention to when starting to build out a SharePoint environment. So first things first, the CPU. Uh, there's been quite a few tests on this, uh, this area and a lot of people, what they forget to do is use four cores on a 64-bit uh, installation infrastructure. Uh, anything more than four cores, we find that there are diminishing returns. Um, uh, one core, you're going to get a very sluggish uh, type of environment. Two cores, you'll get twice the speed. Four cores, you'll get four times the speed. Eight cores, you'll get around about five times the speed. So it doesn't make any sense to go more than four cores. But also at the same time, make sure that your core ratio uh, to your host is one to one. So if your host has 16 cores available, um, only put out on that machine four virtual machines that have four cores uh, pointing to the host core. So that if your host has overutilized the cores on the virtual machines, you won't run into performance issues. Um, that's a big issue. A lot of guys think, well, I've got enough space on my virtual environment to host 10 machines and I can give them all four cores. As soon as you start overlapping and start making that ratio 2 to 1, 3 to 1, you immediately start to see diminishing uh, returns. So it's important to have a 1 to 1 ratio in cores uh, from the host to the virtual machine, um, as well as allocating at least four cores uh, to each virtual machine. Um, obviously, in a SQL environment, um, some will argue that it is better to go up to eight cores, but again, make sure that the ratio of those cores uh, are there. And then, obviously, in a physical environment, you don't have to worry about that type of setting um, when your machines are in bare metal. And in a SQL environment, uh, it's usually still better to go for SQL on a, a physical host. Um, then you don't have to worry about that ratio because it will definitely then be one-to-one. -one. Uh, on a, a, a virtualized environment, though, it is always important to, on VMware or on Hyper-V, to reserve 10% um, of that virtual machine CPU to that virtual machine, which means that in the event of a virtual machine running rampant and taking over the entire CPU uh, for a process or search index that starts to go crazy, um, you'll be able to pull back 10% uh, for your other environments. So it doesn't uh, let loose on that, um, that host CPU based on the virtual machine's requirements. So always important to make sure that you set your virtual machine's uh, CPU to 10% uh, reserved, just in case. So now we've set up the CPUs correctly and you ensure that everything's ratio-wise is set up and you've got your insurance policy set up with your 10% laid down, the next best thing to do is look at your memory. And memory um, is quite an important part, especially for any SharePoint uh, environment. Um, bottom line is you need to have uh, at least 16 gigs per server. And what I always tell the support team is, um, well, how much memory do you have on your personal desktop? And most of the guys nowadays have 8 gigs. Some of them have 16 gigs. Um, and when we're rolling out a SharePoint environment, if you give it anything less than 16 gigs um, and you've got over 100 people using that environment, it's like sharing your laptop with 100 people um, on 16 uh, or less gigs. And so it doesn't make a lot of sense. So in terms of ratio-wise, 16 gigs is, for me, minimum uh, per SharePoint uh, environment. Um, the more memory you have, the better the SharePoint environment performs, the better it will cache uh, for later usage. Um, and this will obviously increase uh, the performance. Um, I would go all the way up to 32 gigs for your front-end servers if you have um, a decent amount of people. That's 
200 plus uh, users that are active on your SharePoint environment. Another a big no-no in the SharePoint space is don't use dynamic memory. Uh, SharePoint servers will use however much memory you give it, as well as SQL servers. So if you set dynamic memory on, you'll be out of memory within a couple of hours. SharePoint will simply take as much um, memory as is available to it. So uh, be very wary as to uh, switching that dynamic memory on. Uh, in my experience I wouldn't use SQL uh, you wouldn't use it on a SQL environment I wouldn't use it on a SharePoint environment another big area in memory is not just the RAM that we slot into the virtual machines it's about the page uh, file available on the um, on the operating systems and a lot of the time these page files are ignored and that could be a major downfall when Memories run when a virtual machine runs out of physical memory, it uses the page file, and that page file memory is as fast as the disk it is used on. So, if that page file, first of all, is on the same drive as your operating system, you're going to have competing I/O speeds, which means that you're going to have competing performance, which means your environment is going to be slower. Bottom line. So. Try if you can put your page file on an SSD drive, um, or set up an SSD location on your virtual host, uh, get a 200 gig drive and drop all your uh, page files on there. That will give um, your page file and your system uh, memory super, super speed and be able to uh, read write uh, like your physical RAM. Um, and that will make a massive improvement in your system's performance. So that's a, that's a big win in that area. Obviously, with an SSD drive, uh, they do come at a cost, so if you can't afford the SSD portion of it, or it's just too pricey because you've got too many environments, uh, virtual machines to look after, um, try use a separate disk, or if you've got a SAN, try and separate uh, your page files out onto separate LUNs. Um, just looking for your I.O. read-write speeds to be as low as possible. Speaking of uh, I/O read/write speeds, um, storage is one of the main contributing factors to a slow-performing SharePoint environment, um, and a lot of the time it's down to overutilization of the same disk uh, for both SQL data logs and SharePoint operating systems. Um, bad virtualization. Uh, techniques can cause incredibly slow SharePoint environments. SharePoint will obviously need its operating system to be running on its own physical disk as well as um, any search indexes, uh, data logs, um, MDF and LDF logs from uh, SQL and the temp DB to all be on a separate LUN or separate disk and um, if possible split the um, temp DB and data uh, onto SSD. You'll see a significant improvement in speed if you do that. Um, every time that you put your um, virtual disks in uh, one LUN or on the same area we have the OS competing with SQL, competing with uh, logs, um, you'll see a huge knock on um, overall um, overall uh, performance on the environment. So it is very important to make sure that that is kept uh, separate. Another big area is, and that's regardless um, of Hyper V VMware or physical location. If you want to get performance out of your uh, storage, make sure to split and partition off those areas accordingly. The other big area is when you're in a virtual disk environment, uh, what type of disk should you choose? So. We've uh, figured out over our years of experience that in the Hyper-V world, always go for the VHDX um, new um, type of virtual drive. Uh, VHD is old tech and doesn't allow for all the performance enhancements that VHDX has come through with. Um, and where possible, use a fixed size disk. 
Anytime you use a dynamically expanding drive, every time that drive has to expand, it has a CPU knock as well as a read-write I/O on that uh, environment, and that use has very big implications. So if you've got users uploading uh, hundreds of megs, if not gigs, um, a day, that CPU is most probably spending more time expanding that disk than anything else. The downside is obviously a dynamically expanding drive uh, can't grow any. Um, any uh, can grow to a huge uh, size without having to reboot the machine, but a fixed size you can't. But I mean that's just basic maintenance. Um, if you check, if you monitor your environment and check to see that uh, size is growing, add new drives, partition off databases. Um, but a fixed size will give you almost two to one uh, in speeds versus our dynamically expanding drives. So it's a no-brainer in terms of performance. Then also in terms of the Hyper-V space, a lot of users go for the IDE controllers because they are uh, by default set up um, on the Hyper-V environments as well as the VMware environments. It's super important just to disk those IDE controllers and switch them for the SCSI controllers. Um, they're super fast um, and a lot of there's a... Uh, there's a rumor going around that SCSI controllers can't boot. Uh, that's definitely not the case. Switch everything that you have to SCSI controllers. And where possible, you can crank that up to fiber controllers if you are in that space where your um, SAN is connected to a fiber controller, obviously that being the fastest out there at the moment. Um, but if you're just running a straightforward environment uh, where you've got local disk, switch that to a SCSI controller, you'll see an immediate improvement in in speed. The infrastructure and uh, networking area uh, of most environments usually gets ignored, um, but they are a key component. Without the network, no one can get to the SharePoint environment. Um, and a lot of the time, guys are forgetting um, that the default legacy network device is actually only 100 meg compliant. So if you have a gigabit switch and you've spent all your money on CAT6 cabling or fiber cabling and you're using a legacy switch uh, adapter, you're not getting that benefit and losing out almost 10 times on the speed. Uh, and that makes a huge difference, obviously. Uh, one person starts uploading uh, 100 meg PDFs and they'll sap the entire bandwidth for the whole company. So it's super important to change your legacy adapters in your switches on your environments to the synthetic adapters um, and if you can switch it um, to a SRIOV which is, gives it direct access to that network card without going through the operating system. Uh, in a lot of tests and benchmarks, we have seen over 50% improvement in bandwidth in the space, uh, which means that what happens at the moment um, is if you don't have SR um, read write switched on, what happens is it goes through the host machine and then the host machine translates that to the physical network card, um, which takes up CPU and time. Uh, this way it goes directly through to the network card, skips the host and speeds up the entire process. Let's the hardware uh, do what it's meant to do, which is um, just a little switch in most VMware and Hyper-V areas that a lot, um, a lot of people miss out on. So it's a, I'll give you a rundown in the demo area, but uh, that's exactly what should be happening in that space. Another good uh, good area to look into is NIC teaming. Um, so team up your network cards uh, on your hosts. So a lot of hosts, uh, guys, will get uh, five or six um, network ports and they'll use one. Um, and if that network cable has to be cut, then that host is completely rendered useless. Uh, it's super important to utilize all the NICs, uh, if you have, uh, connect them to different switches where possible and then team them up in uh, Windows 2012 R2. And that means that you can get double the bandwidth, double the, um, the reliability. So that uh, if one NIC goes down, you're still online. If one switch goes down, you're still online. Um, and you're able to double up on your bandwidth uh, by pushing that out. So that makes a 
big difference, especially if you're uh, a seg uh, segregated uh, environment where you've got some guys coming in from externally, you've got different uh, people jumping in from different branches. You want to be able to give them more than one uh, route to that server and you'll spread the load out uh, quite nicely. Um, network uh, space in a lot of times is overlooked uh, in performance of an environment. Your, your server might be performing perfectly but your network might be congested. Um, these three small little tips uh, will give you massive redundancy as well as great throughput uh, and utilize the full potential of your hardware. So now that you've set up your environment and you've got everything right, your CPU ratios are right, your memory uh, allocation is perfect, um, your network cards have all been set up, you can move on to what type of topology you want to use in your environment. So first things first, a single farm uh, topology is nine times out of ten something used for a development environment. And a single farm topology is basically you've put everything on one machine. SQL, SharePoint, Search, the lot. Um, this type of environment is definitely not recommended for anything live. Uh, it's just an environment to test and uh, develop because you've got all your eggs in one basket. If anything happens to that machine and it uh, goes down, you will need to rebuild, you will be down indefinitely uh, and your performance is going to be impacted on pretty much anything that happens on that machine because SQL will be fighting for resources against IIS and IIS will be fighting for resources against SharePoint Search and all the other applications. So it is super important that in a single farm installation this is purely a development environment. Um, the next step up is to go to two-tier farm and so two-tier farm is quite simply you've got one web application server uh, and one SQL server. So two, uh, two virtual machines or two uh, physical machines or one virtual, one physical, but you split out the two major areas, which is SQL and SharePoint. If SQL is on its own box, it will obviously not compete with SharePoint for any resources, uh, as well as SharePoint won't compete with um, SQL for any issues. However, in this type of environment, once again, if one of those machines go down, SharePoint is down. Um, so that's your risk. However, your performance will be uh, massively enhanced uh, in comparison to a single farm. Um, and you're not all, all your eggs are not in one basket. You don't have to rebuild an entire farm. If one of those servers goes down, you, if it's a SharePoint server, you simply bring up a new SharePoint environment and join it to the farm, or if it's a SQL environment, simply bring up a new SQL farm and, uh, uh, or mirror that farm um, so that you can get some redundancy. It's definitely the space you want to be in if you're going to set up a live environment. Um, then, of course, the next is your three-tier farm, uh, which means that you can have your web applications split with your services, split with your database. And uh, in this uh, instance, you can have only web front ends taking queries, which is where you want to be. You take all your service applications and you split them out onto um, different um, um, different uh, servers as well as splitting out your SQL environment. So how do you get performance out of these different topologies? Well the bottom line is in a single server farm topology performance is going to be limited to the fundamentals. There's not a lot that you can do to increase the performance um, based on topology. You're going to have to look at your fundamentals and uh, put into place the CPU NIC um, fundamentals, the OS fundamentals that we'll talk about a little bit later, as well as the SharePoint and SQL fundamentals um, that we'll go over in a bit. But uh, you won't get great performance out of this machine. The more it gets used, the more it's going to um, compete with uh, other resources and the worse it's going to get. Um, so single form, once again, just for development, uh, something that you can have on your own virtual machine to play around with, but nothing for a live environment. Where you really want to get to is you want to get to a two-tier form. So basically your first tier is where you've got your web server and your application server roles, uh, as well as your second tier is where you've got all your databases and your SQL. 
Two tier does not mean two servers. Two tier means that your environment is split up in two tiers, which means you can have as many web application servers um, as you would like, as well as as many database servers as you'd like. But the perform uh, the platform stays the same for both areas. You are not splitting out your application server roles and your web server roles. You're just adding more web servers and more database servers. So a two tier farm could consist of two uh, SQL databases as well as two web application servers that also perform search and business data connectivity services and Excel services and so on. This is where you want to be in any type of live environment um, because immediately your performance is going to be increased and it's fairly easy to do. Simply spin up a new machine, either mirror your SQL um, or switch on SQL always on um, and then allocate um, new web front ends um, on your web application tier. But if you really want to be serious and you really want to have a great environment and uh, split out performance, um, improve performance by splitting out, you want to go to a three tier farm, which means that your web servers are simply that. They just take queries. And so that's super important because web servers uh, a lot of the time people forget that your search environment queries your web front end. So if you have this on the same machine, that machine is going to take a huge knock. Uh, and you'll see this every time you've scheduled a crawl to actually try and do anything on a machine that uh, crawls itself. is um, You can see a noticeable difference in your performance. So if you have a, um, a three-tier farm, the web application servers will um, only affect themselves. Your web servers will only be affected by the amount of um, usage that you have in that space. And your database servers can do different types of things. So you can have different database servers for different uh, requirements, such as have a database server just to run search and have a database server for uh, very hectic um, content databases um, that are hit continuously or uh, you need performance on them or just split it out for RBS um, on other servers as well as redundancy and you can mirror that whole lot. Uh, but once you split out everything into specific roles, just like in real life, if someone has um, to do a number of different roles, they usually only do a um, half a job for each of them. But if you give someone a job and you tell them exactly what to do, um, they then become a lot more efficient in that specific area. And so I think that is, uh, that's where you really want to be in, uh, in the SharePoint space to get the most productivity out of your, uh, or performance out of your system. Now, running into operating system tuning. So a lot of people forget that uh, tuning your operating system um, will give you massive uh, performance increases. Uh, and one of the best things to do in any operating system is obviously run a clean maintenance uh, schedule and clean up uh, your environment. Um, but your default settings are not meant for performance. Your default settings are meant for pretty, which means straight away jump onto your Windows 2012 R2 or Windows 20, uh 2012 server or 2008 server or whichever servers are running your environment and uh, jump onto the computer properties and change the performance for best performance and run background services because simply what will happen is it will remove all the frills and it will immediately free up close to 15% of uh, CPU usage when using the machine from an RDP session, which is massive. If you're in a situation where you've got a runaway service and you try and jump onto a machine with all those visuals uh, um, uh, running around, you will immediately lock up the machine and have bad performance. So switch that stuff off um, and that will give you um, a much lighter RDP session, which is what you really want to go for. And then the next thing is set up a disk defrag um, maintenance schedule. Uh, if you're using um, anything in terms of non-SSD, uh, SCSI drives or just normal uh, SAS drives, Make sure that you've got a good defrag schedule and make sure that schedule doesn't conflict with your search indexing time. So it's important to set up, uh, set up the time there so that it, you have no conflicts. Um, 
and make sure that your page file settings are on drives like we spoke about earlier that um, don't conflict with the OS um, but also the page file settings in Windows 2012 R2 you don't have to manually go in there and start to tweak them um, they actually run way better if you let Windows manage it. Um, they'll check to see if there's space available. They'll, uh, it will give uh, the machine enough uh, memory when needed. Um, by no means go in there and uh, take over that and add the memory that you believe is required. Um, Windows is uh, in 2012 R2 uh, and going forward that is managed way better. Uh, back in 2008 and 2012, yes, there may have been some value in uh, changing those, but uh, not anymore. And then a big space that a lot of people always talk about is should we use disk compression? Bottom line is NTFS disk compression, yes, it will give you some extra space, but it will have an immediate knock on CPU performance. So uh, any kind of um, compression, if you want to take the CPU knock, um, it's up to you. But in terms of performance, it will have negative performance impact on your environment. So rather find more disk um, then try and knock your CPU uh, for a loop. So avoid using disk compression. And that will bring your system uh, tuning up to date. So your operating system should be running really smooth uh, by checking all those boxes. So now we've got a, a fantastic operating system. We've got a, uh, a great infrastructure that it's built on. Um, the next uh, big thing is to look at is SQL. Basically, SQL is the be-all and end-all of SharePoint, believe it or not. If SQL goes down, SharePoint is down. Um, and so SQL is where all the performance comes from in most SharePoint environments, or 80% of the performance. If uh, SQL is lagging, or if SQL has bad I.O., or if SQL's got too many connections for whatever reason, things start to get bad on the SharePoint front. So it's super important to make sure that SQL is running well. And one of those areas is uh, parallelism. And uh, this area, uh, a lot of, there's a lot of debate around it. Uh, what this basically means is that in a hyper-threading hyper environment, SQL can do more, well, can ask all the cores to do some bits and pieces of the work instead of just asking one core at a time. Um, so this is your max prop settings uh, in your default um, uh, SQL. If you open up SQL Management Studio and you um, have a look at your max prop settings, this actually should be set based on how many cores you have in your environment. Um, and a lot of the time, it's, um, uh, people are setting this to either zero, so that means use um, all the cores for MaxProp, uh, or they're setting it to one, use one core. Um, uh, what I believe is set it to use one less core than you currently have, or all cores that you have, but don't set it to infinity. Uh, this simply means that it will just send out everything to everyone. Um, try and refine it and hone it down to a specific area, uh, but definitely don't use one. Uh, that means that you've got um, f four cores and only one core is being utilized for the SQL queries. Uh, another area is to lift the um, uh, lift the ratio of uh, parallelism um, to at least 50 points instead of five. Uh, there's no need to send out uh, queries for every little piece. Uh, let's, let's SQL do a little bit of work and then push it out when as the load gets a little bit heavier. And we'll go over that in the demo a little bit later. Also, the full factor on most uh, SQL databases um, is set to 100. It's sometimes not as good uh, idea, especially when indexing uh, and defrag comes into play. So uh, there's a lot of contention as to what to do in this area. We find that setting a full factor to 80% makes a um, is a good overall default setting for SharePoint. You can really get your hands dirty and uh, start to change full factors for different uh, uh, types of databases like content databases and search databases. Um, but 80 is a good number and it helps with the, the defragmentation of those drives which means, or those databases, which means they get read quicker. Another cool setting is to uh, simply jump onto that box and lock pages in memory. It's a little setting that 
basically means uh, SharePoint uh, SQL can talk directly uh, to the um, physical hard drive to make changes um, to specific items which uh, helps with that as well as instant file initialization which means that it has access to the MDF changes and uh, makes things happen a lot quicker um, by default those are not on so it's uh, a good idea to go and switch them on at any point uh, this um, this slide deck will be made available publicly so if you do want to go through this all the notes have uh, the links on how to to switch these cool little bits and pieces on and then that brings us to the SharePoint itself optimization so uh, SharePoint has a few areas that can be optimized one of them uh, is mainly around caching and then some compression and then services um, if we look at um, the biggest performance um, improvements around SharePoint is all about caching. Uh, cache profiles, blob cache, SharePoint object cache. Um, and these can all um, add in massive uh, improvements. As soon as you add cache profiles uh, to a SharePoint environment or blob cache, um, what it does is this information that has been requested frequently from uh, users that are on the environment then get access to that information immediately it's held in memory on that web front end so SharePoint doesn't have to run off to SQL query it uh, get the information back and then come back to you and give it to you it hits it on that uh, web front end um, made available immediately and because you've set up your infrastructure to deliver things speedily uh, there it is straight away and uh, these type of settings can be done in a number of places in the SharePoint web config um, uh, as well as um, on the site collection settings but it's super important uh, to switch those on and tweak them um, to get your best performance uh, blob cache as well I mean keeping documents in memory for when people need to get them as well as images um, and a 10 gig blob cache on the web front end means that uh, anything that is loaded um, into memory is then made in immediately available off that web front end instead of having to go run off to SQL and fetch it um, and we can um, we can monitor these types of changes with uh, Umlindi so anytime we do these changes we can monitor if they work or not and uh, blob and SharePoint caching has made a significant improvement on a lot of environments the other area which is uh, quite a considerable contribution is IIS compression. Um, open up IIS, um, set um, compression on and you'll notice the bandwidth from sending and receiving uh, from the web front end to the end user is considerably dropped which means that it moves faster which means a page loads quicker um, and it's all about page load time any environment or SharePoint environment it's super super important to have application page load speed which means as you click it it opens uh, any delay in this type of experience causes massive user frustration um, there's an old school saying that uh, don't ever marry a woman unless you've seen her reaction to a slow internet connection and this is exactly the same uh, type of experience for any of your um, users on your SharePoint environment. No matter how good the solution, if the if it's slow, they are going to find it infuriating and never want to use it again. So it's super important that on page load time, uh, that is sub second, and uh, the experience is quick and easy. Um, like the way Craig likes his woman. Um, of course. The other way um, that you want to make sure that a SharePoint environment is uh, running at optimal speed is switch off unused services. And uh, unused services are these little vultures that sit around in your SharePoint environment just ticking over memory and CPU. So if you're not using access services, which you're most probably not, switch it off. Uh, if you're not using business data connectivity services, switch it off. Um, just run through your services list and switch it off in that space. Um, simply because it's like sitting in a massive house with all the lights switched on. You're just wasting uh, precious resources. So it's a good idea just to run onto any of your servers, check to see what's running. Don't leave it on uh, if you're not sure what it does and you just leave it on. Switch it off, see what breaks. If it breaks, switch it back on. If it doesn't, you're good to go. 
And with that, I'm going to jump in to what we have done at, Shep, uh, at GT to monitor all of these little bits and pieces. We've created a product called Umlindi. Now, Umlindi is the Zulu word for protector. And uh, what this agent does is it does something no other agent does. It monitors SharePoint based on all the fundamentals we just spoke about and gives it a ratio of... Um, uh, we use game theory to give us a breakdown of the ratio of all of these different uh, parameters to give us a score, and we call that the Umlindi score. So anything below 40 is great. Anything between 40 and 60 is uh, hovering on being a little bit naughty, and anything over 60 is super bad. So we need to find out how to do that. So um, our agent uh, looks something similar to this. Basically, it's... Um, a, um, a service that is installed on your Windows servers. Um, it can run on SharePoint as well as on SQL servers. We actually recommend that you put it on any of the servers in your farm and it gives you real-time uh, look into your environment. So let me just jump into our environment here and as you can see this is running on a SharePoint 2010 environment on Windows 2008 or 2. It does run on uh, 2013 as well as 2016. Um, and straight away we can see here what's happening on the environment in one easy glance. We notice that um, our gauge is showing that we're below 20, which is fantastic. That's where we want to be. The environment's just ticking away um, with a few... Uh, revs every now and again. It's been up for six days. It's connected to the Lindy Cloud environment. The SharePoint health score is zero. Anything um, anything uh, on zero is uh, good. One means that there's a laboring. Um, we're at 51 millisecond page load time, which is application speed. So that's perfect for this environment, but of course we've done all the tweaks already. Um, we've mo we're monitoring services that are critical to the SharePoint environment so that we can see, uh, as well as the SQL environment, this is a development box, so it's a one tier farm, just to show you all the bits and pieces. Um, Lindy is running at the moment and it showed us any log entry that was related to SharePoint has uh, also happened within the last 24 hours. If we jump into this area over here, we can see straight away the SharePoint services that are monitoring and we can monitor specific SharePoint services as well as automatically start them if they stop. So uh, a good service to start and stop is the World Wide Web Publishing Service, your IIS Admin Service, your SharePoint Timer Services. If those services stop, um, it's super important to, to get them running again. Uh, so Mlindy can do that for you, as well as monitor them if they are stopping or starting. Uh, and that can just let you know, hey, Forefront Identity Manager stopped, uh, what do you want to do about that? And anyone in the SharePoint world knows that um, that FIM service is the root of all evil. And so in this instance, we're not monitoring it because it's running off maybe another machine or we don't care. Um, but either way, we've stopped monitoring that service. But going forward, if we needed that service to be running, we could start it up, monitor it, and uh, let them Lindy either stop it and start it for us or just let us know what's happening in that environment. We can also choose a SharePoint site that we want to monitor to get our page load time and and quickly bring us uh, bring us a page load speed as if a user was clicking on that page and bring us back the health score, which is easy. We can monitor our SQL instance. So if we had to install this on the SQL environment, we choose uh, the SQL instance that we'd like to monitor and it will tell us how many SQL Server connections are made to that environment, which is awesome to understand how many users uh, are firing with how many queries. Um, but what I really like is the read-write speed um, of the, um, the SQL disks. And uh, anything below one millisecond is what you're really going for here. Um, so at the moment, this is not looking too bad, um, and that will be reflected in the Lindy score. Again, we can also manage the SQL services. So we can say, listen, if SQL stops for whatever reason, please go ahead and start that bad boy up again. Um, anything else that we want to monitor in here, we can just simply select. A lot of guys would most probably enjoy monitoring the SQL Server agent. We know that if that's not running, your SQL Server backups don't run, uh, which means your SharePoint backups most probably won't run. And so that's another good one to monitor.
but the uh, system monitoring is where it all comes together. We monitor CPU usage, memory usage, uh, how much memory the machine actually has, um, the system uptime, the IIS connections, which means how many users are most probably connected to the environment at that time. Uh, we check to see if there's any Windows updates and we check to see the free space usage um, on the environment. So that gives us the overall score of um, the SharePoint environment. No other product does this on the market. Um, we've also recently added Nintex monitoring. So we can see how many workflows have errored, how many workflows are overdue, how many workflows are in progress, um, as well as how many workflows have completed. And if we want to check out one of those, we can simply click on it and open up the workflows and see all the workflows that are running on the environment. So that's great. If we're on the machine, but nine times out of ten, you want to view all of your SharePoint uh, servers from one easy to use location, as well as your SQL environment, um, as well as being able to interact with them. And so we've created the web view where you get a dashboard like this, where you can throw this up and see what's happening on your environment um, from anywhere in the world. You get a username and password, you log in, and you can see the performance of your machines. As you can see, we've got six servers uh, that we're monitoring in this area over here. And straight away, it brings back a number of cool little bits and pieces. We can see our SQL read-write speeds over here. At the moment, all at 0 milliseconds. And we've got a little spark line that shows us that this uh, environment's been jumping up and down in terms of the read speed. So maybe something we need to look into. Uh, we can also see that on average, uh, we've had slightly more than 23 connections uh, that most probably peaked up at around 30. Uh, we've had only a few IIS connections in the space. The SharePoint page load time has been consistently 54 milliseconds, which is incredible. Um, and we can see that we've got uh, some Nintex errors, and we can quickly jump into that space if we wanted to, and then it open up the Nintex errors on that machine. Um, but also the event logs of that machine. So what's happening in that uh, machine and what we can do to fix those. Um, and this is all done from one view, which is awesome, because now we can start to mess around with that machine. So I'm going to quickly jump onto that machine. I'm going to go to a site that we are monitoring. And we're going to give it a little bit of action to see what the performance does. And straight away on our dashboard, we should start to see some movement because um, uh, this is real time. And when we start doing our tweaks, like changing to IIS compression and adding blob storage, we should immediately notice that uh, the page load time will sit low. If our page load time is high, um, uh, we would notice this on the dashboard and we can perform our tweaks and see if it's made any difference whatsoever. So instead of just changing something and hoping and praying that it works, in this space, we can jump through uh, and see if Umlindi has actually made any difference. And as you can see, if I'm clicking through these environments, this is literally application speed. Um, and to move around, um, we can get to anywhere as soon as we click, which is exactly what you want for your user's experience. And Umlindi is telling us uh, exactly that. So. I did want to leave a little bit of time for questions at the end. I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, the presentation. Uh, we'll make this uh, webinar available on our site. Um, you can also go to our site and download Umlindi Monitoring Agent. It is free as an agent, and we do give you a 30-day trial on the dashboard, which, um, again, allows you to monitor all of your application servers, your SharePoint servers, your SQL servers from one location, um, and get that insight uh, into what's happening on your environment. Uh, a lot of our clients usually put this up on big screens in their office so they can view uh, what's happening on their environment, uh, review past um, performance, uh, isolate issues based on what's happening in the environment, um, as well as uh, review uh, errored workflows. Um, it's very difficult to manage workflows um, when you've got a massive environment as to who's doing what. Um, and 
take performance tips from our support engineers where you can log calls from um, to find out what about scalability, what about uh, future performance uh, enhancements, as well as overall uptime of your environment. Um, yes, and that is it from me. Thank you, Brad. Um, we do have some questions. Uh, we only have a few minutes, but I'll go ahead and rattle off as many as we can. Um, so when it comes to licensing, how does that work for this product? So licensing is per server, um, and we do what what an when the agent does is it is is installed on your SharePoint uh, server. You the best way we do it is if you cover all your SharePoint machines, uh, and we do either monthly or annual uh, subscription. Fantastic. Um, is there a trial at all that's available? Absolutely. You can head off to our site, www.gtconsult.com, and you can get a 30-day trial um, of the entire enterprise version of Umlindi, which covers Nintex, SQL, SharePoint, um, the lot. You get access to the dashboard, which is available uh, or supplied by Windows Azure, um, and you can understand and do a full audit of your entire environment uh, for 30 days. Um, and the agent itself will work on each machine after that 30 day. Um, the only downside is you'd have to log on to see what was happening on your environment instead of having the convenience of jumping onto the dashboard. That sounds great. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, when the solution is deployed, do users get their own dashboard? Um, or how does that work? So this um, this environment is uh, usually for your system engineers or for someone that's uh, controlling the environment. Uh, at any point in time, we can obviously, uh, you can decide whether you want your users to have access to this. Um, and you can create as many users as you want uh, based on your sign-up key. So if you want to add more users, you go ahead and you add more users uh, based on your sign-up key. And anyone you give access to can have access to either the view the um, server reports, uh, view the server stats, as well as log support calls. All right. Let's see um, how much more time. We have a couple more minutes. Okay, cool. So... Um, this one is about uh, monitoring servers outside of the SharePoint farm. Yes, so um, Umlindi does do that. It monitors the basic fundamentals of any server. Um, so it checks for Windows updates, it checks um, OS um, patch levels, it checks CPU, memory, hard disk drive, um, and it will give you a breakdown as to what the performance of that actual machine is. Um, but obviously, it's with the modules added for Nintex, SharePoint, and SQL. It uh, gives you much greater uh, benefit from that space. But you can totally monitor um, just simple machines. So if you view on my screen at the moment, this machine over here, uh, the GTC CPT SP16, is one of our new machines that we have deployed um, SharePoint 2016 to. But this actually doesn't have any SharePoint on or SQL on. So it just gives us event logs. It gives us IIS connections because it is a web front end. Uh, it gives us system uptime, free space, that type of um, information. And it lets us know that it's running, which is quite cool. Okay, and it looks like we probably have time for one more. So I'm going to combine a couple questions together here. So how does Umlindi differ from other monitoring tools like SCOM? And um, can it be used uh, in conjunction with SCOM in the same environment? So the big thing with uh, SCOM is SCOM is something that you deploy to all of your machines and then tweak over time. Uh, what we found with SCOM was it, um, it gave a lot of alerts and not a lot of insight um, into what those alerts were doing unless you tweaked it. Uh, the big difference with Umlindi is you deploy it and it will tell you exactly what you need to know immediately. It won't alert you uh, for best practice analysis. It will only alert you when issues start to arise or when it believes that there is a risk. Um, the big problem with SCOM is changing those best practices um, rules to um, accommodate your environment. One best practice is not going to be the same for another uh, business that works in a different way. So Umlindi is super easy to deploy. 
uh, it's a next 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 type of agent installation and you've got a dashboard where you can see exactly what's happening um, but in a SCOM environment you definitely can run Omlindy side by side so you want to use SCOM for um, managing your entire environment but you need deeper insight and, and greater visual um, understanding as to what's happening on that environment uh, especially if SharePoint's uh, running on it or SQL's running on it you want to use Omlindy it blows SCOM out the water in terms of reporting uh, and uh, immediate real-time action from anywhere uh, um, on, uh, on your environment. Also SCOM will only work under one domain. Uh, if you have multiple domains or multiple uh, SharePoint environments, uh, Umlindi will, will neatly bundle that up all in one place um, so that you can get to it from one area. All right, well that's um, it's it for questions and I think we're at time as well. So thank you so much, Brad. Um, it is always so great to listen to you talk all the techie stuff. <laughs> it educates me as well. <laughs> um, and thank you guys for attending. Uh, there will be a recording of this session made available and you should receive a link via email and then we will also communicate out the link on YouTube. So thank you, everyone. Thanks, well, you can go to bed now. Eh? Hey, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Abe. Cheers. Bye.